Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue, everybody. My name is Bradley Robinson, and today we're finally gonna slice into that brisket that we spent the last few episodes cooking to perfection. And I'm gonna give you my top five tips for brisket slicing and serving. Coming up. This is our beautiful brisket. This thing has been resting for the last 15 hours or so in that toaster oven at 150 degrees. If you want to know more about that, you can check out my last video or my other video about how to rest a brisket in a toaster oven. But this thing is looking great, feeling nice and tender, bark is intact, smelling fantastic. Tip number one for slicing into a brisket is don't slice in when it's piping hot. I see it all the time on the internet from rookies as well as professional joints and other YouTubers that slice into briskets when they're incredibly hot. And while it may look good on camera, you're gonna see all those juices pouring out and running all over the board. And that's not what you want because then you're gonna end up with a dry brisket. All the moisture that's supposed to be held within the meat fibers is just leaking out. Not to mention, if you cut into this thing when it's piping hot, it's just gonna steam everywhere. And again, that's just moisture leaving your brisket that you wanna keep in there for that wonderful moist slice. So ideal slicing temp for your brisket is about 140 to 150 degrees internal temp. That way all the fat and juices have time to recirculate and rehydrate into the muscle fibers and you're not gonna have any steam out or leak out on the board. And because I rested this at 155 degrees, we really don't have that far to go. But just to be safe, I'm gonna let this cool down for maybe 10, 15 minutes before we slice in. Tip number two has everything to do with presentation. If you spent the last 20 to 30 hours babying this brisket, you really don't wanna drop the ball right at the end and just serve it on some paper plates and have look all messy. This brisket deserves more respect than that. So what a lot of places in Texas are doing, whether they're barbecue joints, pop-ups, you name it, is using some of this stuff. Put your paper. If you go to any barbecue joint in Central Texas, they're gonna be serving you brisket, ribs, sausage, you name it, on a slab of butcher paper. It is tradition, it is classic for a reason. It looks great. Again, it makes for easy cleanup at the barbecue joint. And nine times out of 10, you're gonna get a piece of butcher paper on a sheet tray or plastic tray of some sort. And for cooking at home, it's really gonna help drive home that aesthetic. Get yourself a tray, get the perfect width, slice it down, get your next measurement, Perfect fit every time, nice clean look. And it's really gonna give you that professional quality in the backyard. Tip number three for your brisket serving is adding some beef tallow. Adding beef tallow to your brisket at this stage is great for a few different reasons. First and foremost, if you pull a brisket out that's dripping with fat, that nice glistening, shiny bark that you slap down on the cutting board, it really is just gonna give you that wow factor and really impress your guests. But it's also great for more than just the looks. No one's ever gonna complain about a slice of brisket being dry if it's literally dripping with fat. Not to mention, as soon as you slice into a brisket, those slices are gonna start oxidizing immediately. So having some extra fat and lubrication lying around is really gonna help stave away that discoloration and increase the life of the slice of brisket that you just trimmed out of this thing. Giving you enough time to make it to the table or to serve everyone before it starts to discolor and look kind of weird. A lot of people will add tallow when they wrap, which is a great move. Having some tallow in the wrap is always a nice thing. We didn't do that, but because we're using the foil boat, all the tallow that has been rendering out of this thing overnight is now collected in the bottom. So we can just pour it right on top. Ooh, that feels nice. Love it! Again, look at all these juices we've got in here. Oops. Oh, don't mind if I do. This is also great, because if you have any crispy ends or bits on this thing, this is one last time to give that a little bit of a soften. And there you have it, folks. Pull that out for a dinner party. You're the real hero. Again, tallowing, unnecessary, but it's a presentation thing, and that's what this is all about. You wanna see my new beer fridge? Check this thing out. It's made by a company called Thermel. They traditionally make stuff for like gas stations and grocery stores, more commercial stuff. But this is their first one that's really designed for the backyard patio man, like myself which is great because it's got that industrial quality build to it. And they threw my logo on it. How cool is that? Looks so nice. So when they offered to send me this, I said, absolutely, I could always use more space for some nice cold beer. It works as a fridge or a freezer, depending on how you set it up. Just a little knob on the back. Very simple, but it looks great. Love the size of this thing. It can hold up to 120 beers, but it's still got a pretty small footprint. So if you needed to throw this in the back of your truck and take it to an event or something, you can totally do that. And if you're a barbecue joint that's giving out free beer, this is definitely Definitely the move. You know, get your own logo on there. They do custom artwork for everybody, not just me. And yeah, I gotta say, I'm loving this thing. Great addition to the patio slash chud set. Don't mind if I do. So big shout out to Thermel. Thank you for sending me the old Polar Volt here. This thing is cool. I'll have a link in the description to where you guys can check this thing out and uh, get a quote with your artwork to see if you can get one in your backyard. Oops. 
number four when it comes to brisket is slicing it properly. I know it's kind of brisket 101, but believe it or not, I've never actually discussed it on this channel before. So for all the newbies here, brisket, much like a tri-tip, has grains running in two different directions. Basically, we always want to be slicing against the grain to give us that best mouthfeel, the most tender bite, so we don't have big, long muscle fibers that are going to be really chewy. And on a brisket, again, there's two muscles. You got your lean, which is that underside muscle, and then on top of that, you've got the point muscle. And the grain structure of those two muscles run in different directions. So when we're slicing this thing, we're going to have the lean side and the fatty side, and we want to slice this way with the lean, but then this way with the fatty. And that's just going to ensure we get the best bite possible. And when cutting into a brisket, I always like to start right in the middle to bisect the lean from the fatty. That way, no matter who's first in line, they can have their choice of fatty, lean, or both. And as we discussed in the trimming video, there's always that little divot right where this ridge comes down into the flat, which is right smack dab in the middle. As for a knife, a nice serrated slicer. I'm rocking Aaron's new knife because it just seemed fitting. So, let's see how this came out. Beautiful, crunchy bark. Oh, beautiful looking brisket. Nice and juicy. That lean looks really nice and moist. Wonderful smoke ring. Good fat render. Not too much of a pocket on this side. Feeling nice and tender, nice and floppy. And then we got the lean side over here looking particularly nice and juicy. Again, nice and tender. Beautiful smoke ring. That fat cap has rendered down very nicely. Another tip I really like when slicing into a brisket is starting on this lean side. I always like to cut from this cut end. I know it seems like a good idea to to start on this little tip right here but if you do that you're going to get down to this point where you've got a chunk that's about this big that's going to be really hard to cut in half because we've got these two muscles with a big band of fat running through them and they're going to want to slide around actually let's see how that gash came out yep there it is from the trim video hate to see it so that's why i always recommend starting here that way you start out with some beautiful center cut slices about a quarter inch on this side. Beautiful looking slice of some lean brisket. I tell you what. And when carving into a brisket, it's kind of like a loaf of bread, especially if you're doing the foil boat method. You know, you got that hard crust on top that you want to get through just using the weight of the knife because you don't want to squish or ruin anything. And the inside is uh, nice and tender. So much like a loaf of bread, if you put too much force on it, you're going to crush the loaf. Same applies with a brisket. Gotta love that sound. Further we get into this lean, still looking good. That gash though, look how deep that went. Unfortunate, but hey, is what it is. And that is your beautiful lean brisket. Moving on to the fatty side here, there's two ends. We got the point end and the flat end. Remember, this is that big part I was telling you about that we tried to minimize, and this is all that fat that we tried to scoop out. And we did a pretty good job. Could have done a little bit more, but you know, this slice is always gonna be the runt of the litter. But this side, however, is where we're gonna get the most of this top muscle. And this top muscle is the point, this bottom is the lean. So this is the side that you're gonna get your beautiful Texas style burn ends from. So usually that to go nice and thick on this side just cut right on through and there we have it a beautifully marbled nice and barky all the way around incredibly tender best bite on the entire brisket and in the trim video i talk about removing the deckle fat that way you get bark on both sides of your best slice and this is what i'm talking about if you didn't take that deckle out you can see the beginning of it right here it would continue all the way under this and you'd have no bark and a bunch of unrendered fat right here but because we took it all out we now have all these beautiful money bites ready to go onto the trim to slice these up, it's very simple. Little bite size, burn ends, ready for anyone standing nearby. That is looking beautiful. Great marbling on there. Nice and tender, nice and juicy. Beautiful smoke ring. That is a beautiful sight. A little bit thicker slices on the fatty side. Another reveal of some perfectly rendered, beautiful marbling on a delicious looking prime brisket. I mean, just look at that, folks. What more in life do you need than that? Incredible bark, perfectly trimmed, perfectly rendered, nice and floppy. Oh, love to see it. Oh, beautiful. I mean, would you just look at it, folks? Come on. Oh. Uh. Love it. All right, let's plate this up. And there you have it, folks. A beautiful tray of some beautiful brisket cooked to perfection. We got our fatty side, our burn ends, and our lovely slices of lean, of course, with some house-made pickles, some Martin's potato bread, a little bit of barbecue sauce, and some lovely white onions. And that is all on top of some Reynolds Kitchen's butcher paper on a lovely tray. And that is something I would be proud to hand to anybody in the world. And that's it, folks. That's what Texas barbecue is all about. I gotta go in for a little dive real quick. Oops.
Oh, that's my favorite bite right there. Lovely smoke ring, perfectly barky, nice and tender, rendered fat. Oh, mm. oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is lovely. It really is all you need, folks. A little salt and pepper, some smoke, attention to detail, and come on, who wouldn't want to eat this? Am I right? Mm. Tell you what, I love a raw onion to go with my barbecue. I know pickled onions are the thing right now, but something about that raw bite and that acidity from an onion really cuts through the fattiness. Little nugget of happiness right here, folks. The Texas style burn end. One of the best bites in all of culinary dumb. Little sauce, why not? Oh, mm. boop, boop, boop. That's a good lean. Y'all definitely need to make your own pickles. These are the ones I made in the chopped beef episode. But the real pro move, you get yourself a nice slice of some fatty, dip it in a little sauce, paint it on the bread. A couple onions, a couple pickles. Get yourself a little fold over. That's it. Texas barbecue in a nutshell right there. All right, I could sit here and eat this all day, but I think it's time for the official taste test. <laughs> the running start on that one, very nice. All right, y'all, let's recap my tips and tricks for serving and slicing into a beautiful brisket. One, let it cool down. Two, add some tallow so nothing oxidizes and everything stays nice and juicy. Three, slice it against the grain. Four, present it in a way that you're proud of that really represents all the hard work that you put into this thing. And my fifth and final tip for the brisket series here is be confident. Cooking a brisket really isn't that hard. If you follow these 15 basic steps and don't try to overcomplicate things, you are gonna end up with a brisket that you are more than proud of. I've cooked great briskets on Weber kettles, pellet smokers, electric grills, tiny offsets, thousand gallon offsets. And no matter what you're cooking on, these basic tips and tricks is really all you need to focus on to get the results you're after at the end of the day. And I know it may seem like a really daunting task to cook something this big for this long, but really it's just time. It's almost entirely hands off. And with all the information out there in books and YouTube videos, all the secrets are out and you really can do this at home. But with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video or this brisket series, picked up a trick or two or got any value out of this content at all, please be sure to let me know by hitting that subscribe button and dropping a like on this video. Also, leave a comment down below if you like this five tip series and if you think I should continue on with pork ribs, beef ribs, pulled pork, you name it. If you give any of these tips or tricks a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.